Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? You know, like, it's like we're, we're mentally in prison. I like the word prison because slavery goes di- too, too direct to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks. So prison is something that unites us as one race, blacks and whites being one race, uh, that we're, one, we're, we're, we're the human race. Do you feel that I'm feeling, do, do you feel that I'm being free and I'm thinking free? I, I, actually, I actually don't think you're thinking anything. <laughs> I think what you're doing right now is actually the absence of thought. And the reason why I feel like that is because, because Kanye, Kanye, you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to believe whatever you want. But there is fact and real world, real life consequence behind everything that you just said. And while you are making music and being an artist and living the life that you've earned by being a genius, the rest of us in society have to deal with these threats to our lives. We have to deal with the marginalization that has come from the 400 years of slavery that you said for our people was a choice. Frankly, I'm disappointed, I'm appalled, and brother, I am unbelievably hurt by the fact that you have morphed into something, to me, that's not real. Bro, you gotta be responsible, man. Bro, I'm sorry I hurt you. You gotta be responsible. I'm sorry I hurt you, bro. Well, what's going on there? What is uh, what is the deal with uh, Mr. West? What is the deal with him? Um, slavery, he thinks, uh, you know, he, he proclaims at uh, an interview with TMZ yesterday and lit up the, 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 the entire Internet uh, last night. And I, I withheld judgment because, frankly, I wanted to see what other people thought first, people who grew up with him, people who love his music, people who remember him. Uh, as being, you know, uh, somebody that got them through something horrible, like Scott, you know, Scotty here. When Scott, you know, Scotty's dad uh, passed away early, early. And uh, Jessica's mom passed away early. So, you know, there was this bond in, you know, between uh, a lot of the kids in my house. And, uh, you know, Scotty loved uh, Kanye West uh, back in the day. And, uh, you know, that th- his first album, you know, sort of got Scott through some miserable times. So... You know, to uh, criticize a guy who means so much to so many, that doesn't mean all that much to me, tell you the truth. Uh, You know, I went to the Eagles concert the other night, and uh, if Don Henley is listening, you know that crazy girl that was in your audience, uh, you know, last uh, Saturday night that was screaming, Don, Don, you fired me. That was me. That was me. I think I creeped him out. I think I scared him. And so I had to, you know, shut it down a little bit and enjoy the uh, music. But Kanye West is not from my era. Kanye West, I think, came along, what, in 2004 or so? So, you know, my musical tastes were already, uh, you know, kind of set. And uh, in addition to my musical taste, I would add here and there a great song from NSYNC or, you know, uh, really uh, mess up Jessica's head and start listening to Backstreet Boys. <gasps> oh, traitor, you know. Uh, and Scott loved Kanye. I mean, he loved, he loved him, and he loved Eminem. I mean, I, I remember how much these albums meant to him. And, you know, he started dressing like that and talking like that. And it was just a little creepy until Oprah did a show that really helped me understand white boys that do that. Um, it was a whole show about wiggers, which became a confrontational word just in and of itself, right? But Kanye West, obviously, has gone from... The 2004 Kanye West, where he he was on that Katrina Hurricane special, uh, standing next to Mike Myers, and uh, they were trying to get people to donate to the Hurricane Katrina Fund to help the people of New Orleans who had been completely and utterly uh, uh, treated like garbage in the George Bush administration. And Kanye stood on the TV, and Kanye said, standing next to Mike Myers, George Bush doesn't care about black people. And I was like, who is that guy? I must know him. Let's buy all his records, right? That's uh, that's the memory I have. 
And then, uh, you know, oh, and, and, and it was great because they threw it to Chris Tucker, who just stood there and stared into the camera like, what just happened? <laughs> but now Kanye is all about Trump. He's just all about Donald Trump. He just loves Donald Trump. He thinks Donald Trump is, uh, you know, uh, uh, everything. He thinks, uh, he doesn't say why. Uh, I haven't heard any coherent, you know, reason, except he's practicing this weird philosophy. What is it, tiger thinking or something? It, it, it reminds me very much of winning, winning, you know, remember that? Oh, dragon thinking. Yes, it's dragon thinking, where he's trying to free himself from anybody who would, you know, venture into his head and put ideas there, like newspapers. Like, you know, facts will do that. They will influence your opinions because they're real. So I don't really know why he loves him, and I, I you know, I can't really explain it. But what you saw there was Kanye West sitting in the TMZ studio and he was uh, explaining that, you know, uh, slavery seemed to him to be a choice because so many black people were involved in it for 400 years uh, that he thinks that they chose it, which is a very hurtful, bizarre. It's like saying, well, six million Jews. I mean, how did they get six million? Why didn't anybody? St you know what I mean? It's one of those really thoughtless disgusting things where you don't realize your family is you know would get uh, separated and shot you don't understand that mothers and daughters were separated you don't understand that fathers and sons were separated you don't understand that people came here uh, you know uh, and and literally committed suicide on the slave boats that brought them here just so they wouldn't have to be slaves okay you just it's just a complete and utter ignoramus i mean it's just a very, very uh, hurtful horrible thing to say and so what you saw there was a guy in the TMZ newsroom who's also a, a sportscaster and a pod, he's a sports writer and a podcast host, and his name's Van Latham. And Van Latham st stood up and said, uh, you know, because Kanye said, don't you think I'm a free thinker? And Van stood up and Van said, I think what you're doing right now is actually the absence of thought. And the reason why I feel like that is because, Kanye, you know, you're entitled to believe whatever you want, but there is fact and there's real world and there's real life consequence behind everything you just said. And while you're making music and you're being an artist and living a life that you've earned by being a genius, the rest of us in society have to deal with these threats to our lives. We have to deal with the marginalization that has come from the 400 years of slavery that you said for our people was a choice. Okay, and uh, he said he was disappointed, Van Lathan said he was disappointed, he was appalled, but he said he was also hurt because that was really hurtful. But I have this little theory I want to throw out there for all of you about why Kanye might be doing this stuff. I think it has to do with his wife, Kim Kardashian West. Kim Kardashian West is on this campaign and it's not a bad thing that she's doing i mean i when i when i saw you know what because i i was on twitter and i was like well let me see what's going on let me see what's going on and i found out that kim kardashian west who's married to kanye um is is actually trying very very hard to get a woman out of prison for a non-violent let me repeat that a non-violent drug crime non-violent this woman named Alice Marie Johnson, back in 1996, was convicted of being um, a communications person, facilitating communications between a cocaine trafficking operation in Memphis, Tennessee. She commit, yeah, I mean, she committed a crime. Obviously, she knows she committed a crime. She's sorry for the crime. She says that you know uh, 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 that uh, she became involved in drug drug trafficking because she had a string of really heinous things happen to her. She lost. She she used to work at FedEx. Okay, this woman, Alice Marie Johnson, used to work at FedEx. Uh, she lost her job because she was addicted to gambling, gambling, and then her son was killed in a motorcycle accident, and then her husband left her. And she was destitute, she had no money, and so she went into a complete panic, and she, out of desperation, decided to make one of the worst decisions of her life, she says, and that was to uh, involve herself in a, in, in a cocaine trafficking operation where she was doing the communications uh, between uh, you know, people who were you know, dealing and uh, you know, coordinating the sale and all that. 
So she got convicted. She got a life sentence. Nonviolent crime. She got a life sentence in 1996. Remember the crime bill? Remember the crime bill? And she's been in prison ever since. She has no possibility of parole. No possibility of parole. She's been there for 21 years. In October, a website called The Mike, I don't know if you read M-I-C, Mike.com, but uh, in, in, in October, Mike published a video of Alice Marie Johnson from inside uh, the prison uh, where she serves, she's currently serving time. She's in her 21st year right now. Uh, she's in Aliceville, Alabama. And um, in that video, she shared the details of the story that I just shared with you. Now, her daughter is also, there's also a video of her daughter saying this is what it's like to have a mother in prison. And her daughter, you know, has gone on to get married and uh, she's ha she had twins. And so, you know, Alice Marie is, is, is a grandma, you know, and all these things. Anyway, Kim Kardashian is very, very dedicated to getting Alice Marie Johnson clemency and or a pardon to get her out of prison. Now, Kim Kardashian, you can make all the jokes you want. When she posts something, and I don't know if it's bots, I don't know if it's promotion, I don't know how much money she spends on Twitter ads, I have no idea, but there are ways to do it. I don't do it. I've been thinking about doing it, but I don't do it. But Kim, Kim Kardashian posts a video, and supposedly eight million people see it. You yeah. know. And she's married to Kanye, and I just have this feeling that Kanye is praising Trump and, you know, uh, saying how he that's his boy and he just digs him and he likes him and he's just this and that and that because he's married to a woman who wants something from Trump. Now, if you drill down a little deeper into the story, you'll see that mainstream news has been reporting that Kim Kardashian has been calling Jared Kushner and that the phone calls between Kim and Jared are more frequent in the last few days. And Kanye, in the last few days, is making even more and more outrageous statements about Donald Trump being, you know, uh, uh, his boy and uh, then degenerates into slavery as a choice. But, of course, that's all anybody will talk about. And isn't it something that Trump didn't thank James Shaw Jr., who, you know, saved a whole bunch of people in a Waffle House, didn't say anything, didn't, didn't have him to the White House, didn't, uh, you know, uh, th thank him for, you know, uh, 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 preventing, you know, uh, uh, more carnage in a Waffle House, right? And it doesn't say anything about him. But thanks Kanye West, okay? It goes out of his way to thank Kanye West because Kanye West is having an effect of convincing some fans of his, some African-Americans, some young white boys, uh, that uh, Trump is cool. And if Trump feels that Kanye is doing that for him, I'm sure Kanye, who's no stranger to the deal and the art of it, uh, you know, he went to Trump Tower when Trump was first running, remember? He's been doing this a really long time. Uh, it's like a year and a half already, two years. So if Kanye went to Trump Tower and said, you know, I'm going to support you, blah, 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 I, I don't think he did it and said, I don't want anything in return. I think he said, in return, this is what I want, because Kim wants it. And Kim's my wife and I love her and she's the mother of my children. And Kim wants this woman, Alice Marie Johnson, to get a pardon. And if you become president, this is what I want, uh, you know, because this is what Kim wants. I don't know. I, I, it's a strange, uh, you know, I, it just, it seems too in the family to not bring up that Kanye goes home to a wife every night or whenever he can, you know, whatever. and that this woman, the mother of his children, wants something from the Trump administration and Kanye doesn't make it a subject when he speaks to Donald Trump in private in his office at Trump Tower. It just seems to me that the likelihood that didn't come up is like nil. Now, that would mean that Kanye is playing Donald Trump in a weird way. Which would be an awesome story for Kanye fans in the end, should he prevail. However, it could also be that Kanye West is just crazy. Because <laughs> I know a lot, a lot of talented people, super, super talented people who are nuts. I also know a lot of talented people who are not nuts. I also know a lot of talented people who are nice. I also know a lot of talented people who are mean. 
you know, uh, talented people come in all shapes, colors, sizes, with all different personalities. I don't know which one is Kanye's real one because he's such a marketer. But maybe that explains some of it. Okay, you tell me. Go to RandyRoads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.